This is a partial list of the commercial diving fatalities over the past 15 years. All have one common cause, Delta P. Two out of three commercial diving fatalities involve Delta P. It is invisible to a diver and it strikes suddenly, without warning. There is almost no way to escape once it grabs you. Knowing what it is, where it lurks, and how to avoid its grasp is the subject of this video. Delta P stands for differential pressure. Our discussion refers to situations where the pressures between two bodies of water are dramatically different. In a situation like this, the bodies of water continuously seek to equalize themselves. In this example, the body of water on the right wants to rush to the body of water on the left by means of the pipe between them. The pressure exerted on the valve stopping this water transfer can be enormous, depending on the difference in the depths of the water and the diameter of the pipe. If the difference between the depth of water is 50 feet and the diameter of the pipe is 10 inches, the force of water exerted on the valve is nearly 1,700 pounds. If the valve was suddenly opened and your arm was near, it would be sucked into the hole instantly. Trying to remove your arm would be like trying to lift a car completely off the ground with one hand. You could only remove your arm if the pressures between the two bodies became nearly equalized. But at the pressure in this example, your body makes a perfect seal, stopping the bodies of water from equalizing. The formula for calculating the force of water through a hole at a particular depth is the area of the hole multiplied by the difference in water depth multiplied by the PSI per foot of water depth or in the situation just described the 10 inch hole equals 78 square inches times 50 feet of water depth times 0.432 PSI per foot of fresh water depth equals 1,685 pounds of water pressure. If you are diving in salt water, be sure to use 0.445 PSI in your formula instead. You can't see or feel a Delta P situation as you dive near it. It grabs you suddenly, and it doesn't let go until the pressure is equalized. When it's got you, it's got you. As you watch the following recreations of actual Delta P incidents, ask yourself if you have, on occasion, ventured into situations without being thoroughly prepared. Diver 1 enters the water behind the dam structure in order to clean the strainer of the dam's drain. When the drain is cleared, the tremendous force of rushing water through the drain grabs hold of Diver 1, sucks him partially inside and traps him. Diver 2 enters the water to help Diver 1 and becomes trapped also. Diver 3 enters the water to rescue Divers 1 and 2 and after 40 minutes returns to the surface with both divers. They are dead. Diver 3 was hospitalized for injuries suffered in the rescue attempts. A scuba diver was repairing a pool bottom at a depth of 10 feet. He came close to the open pool drain and was drawn against it. His body made a perfect seal against the drain. He was diving alone and had no tender at the surface. No one knew he was trapped. He ran out of air and drowned. Two scuba divers entered a water tower to unclog a drain. Using a fire hose to blast away the silt and mud that was clogging the drain, the drain suddenly opened. A great suction immediately occurred. Diver 1 was pulled into the drain. 
Visibility was zero. Diver 2 did not know that this had occurred. Diver 2 surfaced, thinking Diver 1 had already come up. Diver 2 made repeated but unsuccessful attempts to find him. Diver 1 ran out of air and died. Neither diver was tethered to the surface, had communication with the surface, or with each other. A surface supplied diver was working offshore in 86 feet of water on a well reentry project. He was using a drill string to hook a trash cap inside a 13 inch well casing. The first attempt failed to catch the cap. The diver was asked to stand by the hole to make sure the string caught the cap. He reported when he saw the cap was hooked and began to leave. The drill string was pulled to the surface rapidly. Because the cap was nearly the size of the casing, a great suction developed. As the cap came free, the rushing water grabbed the diver and forced one leg into the hole up to the pelvis. The diver was killed. Diver 1 enters the water at a hydroelectric generation plant. His assignment is to seal off leaks in a large gate valve. The three-person dive team is assured by the plant's operating personnel that the gate valve is closed. Diver 1 surfaces and reports that he thinks the valves are open. The winch is started and closes the valve. A 30-inch sluice gate is manually cranked shut. The dive team questions the plant personnel. The valve indicator shows the valve not fully closed. Plant personnel reply that the indicator is never correct and typically the valve is cranked until tight. Diver 1 re-enters the water, convinced that everything is okay. In a few moments, he begins to scream. The dive supervisor tries to contact Diver 1 on the intercom. The tender and supervisor pull the lifeline and umbilical. Both have broken from their attach points. The gates are cycled open while waiting for the rescue divers. Two attempts by the company diver failed to locate Diver 1. Twelve hours later, Diver 1's body is recovered. When you accept a new job, make sure you take part in a pre-job meeting. Be sure that you understand the layout of the site and how the piping and valve systems work together. The diving supervisor should have a simplified but site-specific schematic of the site and a diving checklist to make sure nothing is on or open that shouldn't be. Your client also needs to know about Delta P. If they take your concerns lightly, make sure they understand the life-threatening hazards. Always practice lockout tagout procedures. These are tried and true methods that can eliminate machinery and valve accidents if practiced religiously. Make sure to consider the potential Delta P hazards of your new assignment when choosing your equipment. Make sure others in the water and on the surface can tell exactly where you are. They should be able to communicate with you at all times and be able to get you out if you're stuck. Make sure your equipment won't interfere or become fouled if you must be near a Delta P situation. There are certain techniques that you can use to help reduce and even eliminate Delta P hazards. The first step is to recognize the potential forces working on each other in your environment. Learn the layout of the site and how the system functions. Calculate the force of water at the depth you're working based on the size of the openings at that depth. Instead of cutting holes to drain water or relieve pressure, cut slots. If your body or equipment can't make a good seal against the flow of water, you can't get stuck. Fabricate a cover for the drain that has a screen. 
or make a cover that has more than one hole a good distance away from the other. The idea is the water can still get through even if your body gets in the way. The goal of this video is to make you aware of the potential for differential pressure situations. The key is to recognize them beforehand and make sure you are prepared to deal with them. Because when it's gotcha, it's gotcha. Don't add your name to this list.